According to legend, the Mayans predicted the end of the world on December 21st, 2012. So we'd better talk fast. Whether crushed by meteors, assaulted by aliens, or run smack into God's wrath, our planet seems to operate on a perpetual best before date. In a moment, Bob McDonald explains the science behind the potential end of the world. Professor John Marshall will help make sense of humanity's long-standing preoccupation with its own demise. After a word or two from you, Jerry Jenkins, co-author of the best-selling Left Behind series, speaks personally about God, eternity, and the end. This is Context, a look at life beyond the headlines. According to legend, the Mayans predict the end of the world on December 21st, 2012. But what about the science of the matter? Is it even scientifically possible that the world could end? Period. Bob McDonald, popular host of CBC Radio's Quirks and Quarks, is here to help us understand the science behind the end of days. Bob, we're glad you've joined us while there's still time. <laughs> yes, yes, happy to be here on time. Uh, it's, um, well, it's, it's an interesting time to be alive right now, Lorna. <laughs> okay, unpack the Mayan uh, prophecy rumors, uh, the whole stuff that's been buzzing around. What really are they predicting? Well, actually, I haven't seen a Mayan prediction that predicts the end of the world. I've seen the uh, the end of their calendar that's called a long count, and uh, I've heard talk about maybe a new age beginning, but the Mayans were really good sky watchers. They had observatories like Coracal in the, uh, in the Yucatan, and they watched the stars, and they were very good astronomers. They had a very good sense of time, and they had calendars just like we do, but they divided time in different ways than we do, but in the same way that that we have minutes, days, hours, centuries, millennia, they had different units, including ones that were thousands of years long. So their really long one is called the, the long count, and in the same way that our calendar turned over on the millennium at 2000, theirs turns over this year. But I haven't yet seen an actual prediction from the Mayans themselves that say the world's going to end there. That seems to be coming from conspiracy theories, theorists in this world right now. Why a calendar flip being the end of the world and such an old calendar well, flip? You know, calendars have been flipping over a long time because the Earth is not a very good calendar itself. We have this inconvenience that our planet doesn't go around the sun in an even number of days. If it did, it would be really easy to have a calendar that would always stay in sync. But instead of 365 days, we have 365 and a quarter days. There's always a, an extra quarter of a day. So that's why we have leap years every four years to try to get things in sync. So any calendar usually gets out of balance and, and they have to be resynced again. So we've been struggling for this for a long time. But when you think about it, Lorna, calendars are our invention, not nature's. So when we try to impose nature on our system, we're going to run into trouble when we do that. So that, that's really what's going on here. Okay. But as far as, as far as the end of the world, yes, it will happen. Okay, let's ask, let's talk about that. Is it scientifically possible that the world will one day end? Absolutely. In fact, we even have a date for that, and it's not December 21st, 2012. <laughs> uh, it might be December 21st, but it's going to be December 21st, uh, 4 billion, 500,000 million something years from now. Uh, and that's when our sun is going to come to the end of its life or go into its death throes. And when the sun ends its life, it's going to take us with it in an, a really spectacular way. We're going to become engulfed by the sun. That will be the end of the world. And what will it look like? You're gonna, we're going to be engulfed. That's fire. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting because when our sun goes through its final phases of life, it's going to balloon up and turn into what's called a red giant. And that star is going to be larger than the orbit of the Earth. So it'll actually encompass us. And this will happen fairly quickly. So if anybody's here at that time, the sun will change its uh, size. Right now, it's about the size of an aspirin with your hands straight out. But it, it, it will start growing and growing in a matter of days or weeks. And it will get 
get bigger and bigger in the sky and eventually it'll fill the entire sky from horizon to horizon. The temperature here will soar. Uh, water will start to boil out of our oceans and form clouds and then the clouds will be burned off and the earth will have a white tail behind it like a comet as we're going around the sun. And then when all the water's gone, uh, life will be gone, the planet will be absolutely incinerated and then by the time the sun completely engulfs us, it's quite possible that mountains will melt down into the valleys and the earth will become a molten blob that may or may not survive. It'll become a, just a burned out cinder. So that's going to be the real end of the world. Okay, fascinating because the Bible does predict there will be, it'll burn away at the end. So that's your 4.5 billion year uh, projection. Right. But what yeah. about meteorites? Anything else? Well, I if you want to talk about life, on Earth. Now that's different. Uh, I believe the planet itself will survive that long because the Earth is really hardy. It's been hit before. We know that there have been at least five extinctions in the history of the Earth, times when life has been wiped out, either by meteorites, by very large objects coming down from space. The last one was the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, but there was another one before that. 250 million years ago when 90% of all life on Earth was annihilated. 90% Lauren, including the oceans. The Earth was almost sterilized. And every time that that has happened, new life comes back, but what comes back is different than what was there before. So yeah, that kind of thing could happen, although now we have telescopes watching for objects from space very carefully, and if anything's coming our way, we'd see it. Um, then you could say, well, maybe there could be crazy volcanic eruptions go off, or even ice ages, which we've had before, or disease, or pestilence, all of those things are possible, or even at our own hands. Will it be humanity itself? Can we survive our own technology? Will we burn up and eat up everything in sight until we just make ourselves extinct? That's a different question uh, about the end of life on Earth, not the end of the Earth itself. So are there any telltale signs that we could note in nature that we are eating up, burning up the end of the world could be closer than we may think. Well, by many counts, the extinction rate of species right now on the Earth is figured to be about the same as it was when the dinosaurs were wiped out. We're, we're killing off species by killing habitat, we're cutting down forests, we're uh, fishing up the oceans, we're polluting, and species are going extinct. Meanwhile, the Earth's population has reached 7 billion. Do you know, if we all just held hands and stretched our arms straight out this way, everybody on Earth, we would circle the globe uh, more than 100 times. We would reach to the moon and back more than a dozen times. That's how many of us there are, and our numbers are still going up. We're continuing to burn fossil fuels. We're changing the climate. We know that. So those things are are dealable with. I mean, we can fix that. I, I think we're smart enough that we can work our way around our own engineered catastrophe that could be coming. I think we're smart enough to avoid it. All right. Bob McDonald, thank you very much for giving oh. us those perspectives from let, your great scientific point of view. <laughs> okay, let's have a great party on the 21st. <laughs> okay, thank you, Bob. Okay. All right, now it's time to find out what you, our audience, think. Do you think the world will end within the next 50 years? Yes or no, join the conversation, send your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. Our studio audience is taking a live vote and we'll have those results in a moment. Coming up, the end of the world. We'll speak with professor and author John Marshall on why we can't get enough of that topic. The Mayan prophecy says the world will end December 21st this year. Do you believe that is true? Uh, I don't. Just because the calendar ends doesn't mean that the world is going to necessarily end. You used to think this is true, that the world would end, now you don't. Uh, what changed? I, um, I paid attention to astronomers and some astrologers, and both of them said that the, uh, there's more inaccuracies now than there are accuracies. 